Hello, my name is Pavla. Welcome to my channel. And in this video, I will show you how to make nice backside. In case of backsides, I think they are a little bit underestimated and I like to make them pretty nice if I have a time, of course. I know they are not visible when you wear the jewelry or your client wears it, but I believe that beautiful backside is a it's a bonus. It, it means that you care about your clients. And I think it's the same feeling like when you buy the lovely handbag and there is a beautiful fabric inside. I wish it will be in every handbag I have. And unfortunately, it's not so common. And this feeling I would like to provide to my clients as well. So this is why I think to make nice backside, it's important. Let's talk about color choice. This elephant, which is made by my batik technique, has gold backside. Of course, it could be any color in this case, but I like to make backside in fun colors if possible. But if you have, for example, black frame here it is much better to use also black on your backside but black is a little bit sad so it's a it's a place for your fantasy same here you know there is also black frame so i decided to make uh, my backside in black color which is not my favorite color for backsides actually. There is an exception. There is a mint green backside, but you need to be really careful. This backside is not visible from the front side. So if you are a beginner, I recommend you just follow the color or make color similar um, according to your you know, very edge of your piece. It is much easier. Let's start with the pendant. I will use this little circle as a pendant. This made by my Batik Technique. And of course I have available this workshop, which is one of my biggest classes ever. But for today, you just need to know and how to make a backside. It's not very pretty, right? You can see there is a scrap and there are some imperfections also. And all of this we need to cover. And you may notice that also it's not very perfect edge here. If possible, I recommend you to use sanding paper and simply remove all of these imperfections if possible. And it is easier to make nice smooth edge if you already have it prepared. So just quickly by the coarse sanding paper or whatever you use for sanding and make nice or nicer version of your circle. It's already removed and we can continue with backside. What you will need, you need a liquid clay, texturing sponge or texture. I like to use my liquid clay in little bottles because it is easier to work with. This is my blue, which is you know matching blue somehow clay and I'm going to texture it by texturing sponge. There is a question about the thickness of your backside. It really depends on your project. If you wear brooch, I'm pretty sure you don't want to have to be very heavy and it could damage your clothes. But in case of pendant, it can be quite thick. And also it depends how thick is your front side, your front piece baked already, of course. My piece is about a medium thickness and I will use also a medium thickness for the backside, which is most versatile for all pendants and brooches. 
Uh, in case of earrings, I recommend to use a little bit thinner to make them lighter. I will go with my texturing sponge directly into the pasta machine. You need to know just one thing, that you can go together uh, further than medium setting. Very thin setting damage your sponge. I use a plus pasta machine at this moment and my medium setting is number two or number three. And I will go in this case because it is going to be a pendant on number two to make it quite solid. You can see this is number two setting, which is pretty thick, but not very thick. And I will roll my clay with my sponge together to texture it. And I will do it twice. You can also do it three times, doesn't matter. But I like to do it more than once to have nice texture on it. When you have prepared your piece of baked clay, just use a liquid. I like to use brush. This is actually a very cheap cosmetic brush. And cover by gently. Do not put too much liquid. Just make it you know, well covered by very thin layer of liquid clay. And then if your pendant have a direction and this one it has, sometimes it helps when you use, it's quite easy version, just place your texture, textured clay on your piece. And because this piece is curved, I will cut around on the curved surface. I was baked it on. So if it is flat, just it is simple. But in case of curve, it's much easier if you have a piece supported. So I will use my old scalpel and I will cut it in a little angle around my piece. And because it's going to be a pendant, my clay is quite sick. There are many ways how to make a bale for your pendant, but what you need to know, and I recommend you just make a mark of direction, you know, of your bale because it's not transparent and it's very easy happen that your bail is, you know, on the wrong position and you have it like this and it's annoying. So if you have intention to make these flowers going up, you need to mark something on your backside. It really helps. And now it's time to make a very, very simple bail. And that is one of my most favorite version of bales ever. I will use clay on the thickest setting, which is, you know, I have just small piece of, of it. I will texture it again twice, and I will cut a simple oval shape, or it can be any, you know, it can be a rectangle, or it can be also the eye shape, or whatever you have. I have now the eye shape, so I will. I will cut eye shape out. Could be better. And I have it. So, and I, but you need to have a nice bail. Just you anything around it which is thick enough according to your you know piece of leather or buna cord or whatever you want to string your pendant on it doesn't matter what is it but it needs to be thick enough 
you can use your you know rope or wire or whatever and i think it's really anything this is my needle tool by the thing and you will need again a liquid clay this is really important and just these edges these wings Place here and here. It's very big, right? So, of course, we will adjust it a little bit. So. I connect it with my clay and I will a little bit change the wave change the shape of wave to make it more comfortable to wear. And I use a Premo clay which stays as it is. If you work with any other brand like a Kato, you need to put something, a piece of paper inside not to make your loop flat. And what I like to do, because it's, you know, it's quite boring, it's not very, you know, fun, and pleasant. I like to decorate this somehow. And I, of course, use my brand uh, to put on it. So, for I recommend you just before baking to use a piece of wire or piece of your string to test, to check if your clay is, you know, if it is functional. It's possible because it's glued by, you know. So I will use it and I will check if it is all right or not. And I think it could be a little bit, you know, position a little bit, a little bit this way, just a little bit. So adjust according to your needs, test it, because it's better to do it before baking than after, right? And there is our magical sponge and just connect it properly, or you can make it almost disappearing into your background, which is pretty nice, but it's not necessary. If it is nice that you like it, you can keep it as it is. So we have this. I will a little bit, you know, make it more even. And now it's time for decoration. First of all, what I like to do, and I do it always, I make these little dots by my stylus. I like the edge, which is nice and interesting. And I, I feel it looks more, much better than if I keep it plain without these lower dots. You can do it also or not, it's up to you, but this is what I like and what I will share with you is just what I like, right? And what I do. So we have a decoration already. And sometimes it's enough to, to do this step and it looks even better than before, right? I like to use my stamp, which I have very long time. And, you know, because my name is very long, I created this brand 15 years ago and I still use it for my jewelry. So I just place my, it is, you know, it's it's rough clay, it's very thin and I used the stamp and and also the uh, perfect pearl gold powder, but you can use anything, piece of, you know, cane with your name or whatever you like to use to make your piece, you know, signed somehow. So this is, you know, my branded clay. I'm not sure if it is on right position, but somehow let's say yes. And I have also 
a gold, very thin sheet of clay. This is the thinnest, thinnest setting of my pasta machine. And I think the little leaves would be quite cute. I will move my paper and I like to cut on my tile, which is glossy, so the clay will perfectly stick on the tile. So use your scalpel or X-Acto knife or whatever you use. I like to use these scalpels because they have sharp edge and it's easy to cut. So let's cut a little, three little eye shapes. You know, it's not a big deal, right? I don't care, they are not the same because I like it if they are not. I will use my scalpel to transport my leaves on my piece. So for example, one here, one here, one last one here. And I like to make them, you know, more like leaves. I still use my scalpel, but blunt part of it. And just simply make a, you know, texture by your knife. And that's it. And you can use your stylus and make little you know, lines here and here. And you have a little decoration of your backside. And it really took a couple of minutes to make it all together. And I also, because there are, these edges are not very nice, because my cutter was not sharp, I like to do something like this. to make it more connected. You know, you don't need to do all of these steps, but I just want to show you something for your inspiration. It's not flat. I will bake it in my, you know, curved surface like this. And because it's already baked and it is, a tremor clay. I don't mind the surface is glossy because it's baked already. And also it's a little bit textured by fabric. I think it's quite visible. I roll it through the pasta machine with some piece of denim and I made the piece with a texture. So it's absolutely not glossy and it will not be glossy. So I'm not scared about this. And I will bake it exactly like this. And you have pendant prepared to be hanged on anything you like. And now quickly with the texture.
Don't leave me 